So let's do this effect. First thing that I'm going to do, I'm going to place our black video. Then we are adding the title on top of our video. We can customize it by clicking on it and editing the text, font, color and size. I will speed up this process. Let's add our transition now. Just go in video transition and scroll down to motion, select the push transition and drag it to our clip. Double click on the transition and you can change the duration to 0.5. To edit this just go in effects or choose transition. I'm typically setting it up to 12 frames. That's what's worked for me and also start from left by default choose is in and out and we can make a motion blur i'm always setting up to maximum after customizing the transition i copy it using command plus c select the edge of the title clip to highlight it in green and paste the transition with command v this way, both the background and the title have the same push effect without any additional keyframing. You can easily copy and paste this effect to the other clips in your timeline, making quick adjustment as needed. In the color page, we are going to select the magic mask. You have two different options the object mask and the person mask i usually always use the object mask but in this case let's try the person mask you have two options first one is person and the second one is features so let's try the hair we can easily track the hair just select the plus icon and draw one line over the hair and instantly the hair is selected just make sure to turn on the mask overlay. We can choose between faster and better tracking. So let's first try with fast. As we can see, it's doing pretty good job, except some part of the hairs. Okay, so let's try now with better quality. As you can see, instantly there's some improvements of all the tiny little hairs. It's more precision, but it depends on your computer how fast it's gonna render the tracking. I'm actually going to delete all these masks and try to detect the whole person. Just select it with one line. And there you go, it's automatically selected. So let's hit run. And it's doing pretty good job tracing the whole person. It's tracing slow because it's in better mode to refine all the edges. But let's try now in faster mode. It's going to be low quality, but it's rendering pretty fast. But it's not so accurate. Just to notice the difference, let's now try with better mode and hit play. This is way better on the edges, but as I mentioned, you need longer time to render this. This basically is AI doing all the hard work for you instead of you doing it frame by frame. For example, if you want to cut out your subject or put something behind it, or simply if you just want to apply some effect on that part of the image. We are going to learn how to remove object from our clip. So let's get started. First thing that you need to do, just select the clip and navigate to color tab. Go to a window and draw a window over the object that you want to remove. Just customize it to fit perfectly around your object because there is a movement. 
when you are finished, navigate to Tracker and hit Run. While we are waiting for the tracking magic to be done, we can create one more node. Just make sure you will connect blue with blue. And now the easiest part. Just navigate to Effects and type Removal. You will see at Object Removal the last and drop it to our node. And press the Scene Analysis button. Give it a couple of seconds to render. And now we have the area that was affected with grey. After that click Build Clean Plate. And you can see right away it removed it. And this is how easily you can remove objects from our shot. So now let's preview it. I think it did a great job just in a couple of seconds. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. And if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel for more content like this. We're gonna learn how to do a face refinement. Make sure you will select your clip and navigate to the color panel. After that go to the effects and type face. Just drag the first effect to your nodes. On the right side we can adjust all the settings. So first thing that we need to do is show overlay to see what's happening. Also you can select detect face in frame and track forward and backwards. After a couple of seconds it will be done. Now turn off the overlay so we can see clearly what's happening with the face. By default beauty it's activated. So we can tweak and adjust a little bit up to our liking. Just don't go overboard with it. Let's see the results off and on. It's subtle but it's very effective if you need it. Also we have smoothening, beauty advance. So let's try to tweak smoothening a little bit. I think this is too much. Let's try also beauty advance. Also we can tweak all the settings here up to our likings. Let's restore it back to default beauty automatic and make subtle changes only. Next thing is skin grading, but we will not touch this today. The other one is side lighting. So if your model is too exposed from one side, you can lower it or brighten up that side. We can also change the eyes, the sharpness and brightening. Also very cool feature is eye bag removal. You should definitely try this one. Now we can see the end result with and without the filter. Next thing on our list is the lips. Also we have multiple settings. Let's try this one. I don't think we're gonna use this one. We're gonna speed up here while I'm trying all the settings so you can see the results. Next thing on our list is cheeks. Let's try them. We also have hue and saturation to change. And the final one is the chin. Also here we have hue and saturation, but I will not touch this one. So this is very powerful tool in DaVinci. And let me know you guys if you are using this one so far. This is pretty cool tool. It will allow you to adjust a little bit the lighting after you shot the clip. Over here we have a clip that is exposed from one side. So if we want to adjust the lightning in post-production we can use this tool. So let's get started. Make sure you will select your clip and navigate to effects. In open effects 
search for Relight. Just drag and drop to our clip. Just make sure that the preview is on and what this is doing is just making like 3D map so you can see exactly where the lighting will go. And it recognizing people. You can move it around to adjust the light from which angle you prefer. Basically this is a virtual light and you can relight your scene just with a click. I will turn off now the preview and let's try the settings. Always make tiny changes, don't go overboard. Now we're gonna see it with the effect off. In this tutorial this is only a preview but if you want to go advanced with it you can do it. Over here we have directional light coming from the left side so also let's try that feature. It's similar like the point but now you can go in full circle and adjust the different angle of the lighting. With this feature we can enhance the light source. Make these changes subtle cause we don't want to make hard shadows. You can play around with the softness, lotion and all the other settings. Just to mention this feature will track and follow your subject in every direction. One more time with the effect off and on. Real light it's a fantastic tool for creating realistic virtual lights in your color grade. If you have any questions please leave them down in the comments. Now we're gonna learn how to replace background using the magic mask. So let's get started. The first thing you need to do select your clip and navigate to the color page. Then select the mask and make sure it's selected for the person. Switch from fast to better for a better result and make sure the eyedropper is selected. Simply drag the line over the person and click overlay. So we will see what is selected. Now just make sure the playhead is at the beginning of the clip and press track back and forth. I will not leave you to wait while this process is rendering so let's speed it up. Next thing we need to add alpha output. Now connect the blue rectangle with the blue dot and change the in and out ratio to minus around 40 and clean black 1.2. Now let's switch to the edit page and there we go we have transparent background. So let's insert the new background. We need to put it under our main video. Just trim it and change the places. And there we go. This is almost done. Now we just need to make a small tweaks just to look realistic for the perspective. I will speed up this process so you don't need to wait me adjusting around. One more trick to make it even more realistic the virtual background is to add a lens blur. You can find it in effect, open effects, just drag and drop and change the blur just a little bit so to look realistic. And we are done. This is the final result. This is just example to show you how to do it but you can tweak just to make it perfect. So let's see it in full screen now. Even if you shot your clip with 25 frames per second we can slow it down and look smooth with optical flow. So let's get started. This clip is shot in 25 frames per second. So let's make it to look like 120 and smooth motion. First thing that we're gonna do just press right click on the clip and every time control. Just press on the small arrow change speed and make it 25%. Here basically we are slowing the, this down to be about 25% of what it normally is. Now if I play back this clip this is what I get. It's not very smooth, it's jittery and choppy. For sake of this tutorial I'm going to take just one small portion for this and trim it. 
Now after slowing down the clip I will go in the inspector panel, video and edit time and scaling. Make sure this is on. And for the edit time process what I'm going to do is choose optical flow. For the motion estimation we're gonna choose speed warp fast but if you prefer you can choose better. This will take more time. For resize filter choose sharpness and for scaling project settings can stay. One important thing here with the settings is when you choose the optical flow if your computer it's a little bit slow it might crash. So best advice is keep this off for now and later before you export the video just turn it on so you will prevent crashing. And also maybe will not play back in real time so that's why during edit is best to keep it off. Now let's export our video to see the final result. So this is four times slower than what is originally recorded. If you have any questions for this tutorial put them down in the comment. I'm going to teach you how to transform your shaky camera footage into a smooth and stable video. We are going to do all of this in the free version of DaVinci Resolve. So let's get started. Open a new project, rename it and in the media pool right click import media. Select your file and drag to the timeline. You can collapse the media pool so you will have more workspace. Let's review some of this shaky footage. This footage is rough because it's filmed with a phone while walking on the mountain and the result is that the footage is jumping up and down making the viewer dizzy and not focus in our subject. Let's fix this using DaVinci Resolve built-in stabilization feature. Navigate all the way to the right side in the inspector and you will find stabilization. If it's off just turn it on and press on it to expand it. First is the mold. Over here we have three options. The first one is perspective, next one is similarity and the last one is translation. Each of them use different type of algorithm to try to stabilize your footage. Different modes will have different results. So let's try all of them together. Next one is camera lock toggle button. This one is best to use if you want to achieve a tripod stabilization mode. Because there will be no movement whatsoever. And if you toggle this option on there is no changing on the other options down below, they are disabled. Stabilizing algorithms are going to distort our image and on the sides there will be black edges around your frame. To avoid this make sure the zoom toggle is checked. This feature will zoom slightly to eliminate all the black edges around your footage. Let's start testing the three modes and see which one work the best for our footage. Let's start with perspective and click stabilize. In couple of seconds it will be done. So let's review it. Wow this is great only with one click. But let's give it a chance to the other two modes. Now similarity. Stabilize. Okay this is good but it's not great because you can see some wobbling at the background. And now let's give it a chance to the last option. Stabilize. And I think we should stick with the perspective because the first option was the best one. Okay now this look much better. The camera movement it's so smooth. I'm so amazed with this feature. Instead of bringing a gimbal to the mountains you can imitate the same look with only one button. Let me know down in the comments which DaVinci Resolve tutorial you would love to see next.